I want to make sense of Northern Ireland then and now, speak to Paul Donnelly. We're not doing to each other what it was we did in the past, but there are still traumas and legacies. We are still displaying conflict behaviours considerably after the events. The Belfast tour guide takes visitors through 25 years' worth of bombings and shootings, and he knows the central pillar of Northern Ireland's peace, the Good Friday Agreement. He worked on it as a mediator. It meant that the various parties who'd been so conflicted agreed that they were not going to conduct the conflict in that manner anymore. So essentially, it brought an end to most of the violence. Signed in 1998, the Good Friday or Belfast Agreement set up power sharing between nationalists and unionists and brought down barriers between Northern Ireland and the Irish Republic. But Brexit is stress testing the agreement to potential destruction. Questions about the durability of the Good Friday Agreement are now coming from across the political spectrum, whether that be Irish Prime Minister Michael Martin, Northern Ireland's unionists, or those for whom the agreement overemphasises divisions and marginalises the growing centre ground. A mock funeral for the Good Friday Agreement, dead already, say some unionists, because of the Northern Ireland Protocol. Part of the UK's post-Brexit trading arrangement with the EU, the Protocol established an effective customs border between Northern Ireland and the British mainland. For unionists, an unacceptable revision of Northern Ireland's place in the UK. Northern Ireland's constitutional position was supposedly protected by the agreement, but what we have seen through the Northern Ireland Protocol was that guarantee, that promise, was a sham. It wasn't worth the paper that it was written on. So what about this agreement is worth saving? The Centrist Alliance Party has different concerns. It wants the agreement rebalanced so unionist or nationalist parties aren't able to obstruct functioning government. I think that to have a Good Friday Agreement that's fit for purpose in 2022, we need to remove the vetoes that are currently being abused by uh, Sinn Féin and the DUP. There's currently a third way in Northern Ireland. It's not just unionist versus nationalist. Northern Ireland currently has no functioning government. Unionists have collapsed power sharing over the Northern Ireland Protocol. The UK government is obliged to call new elections, but few see this as a fix. Even after that election, we don't know how it'll be possible to get the executive functioning again, given that the DUP is still likely to veto participation. The Good Friday Agreement was foundational for Northern Ireland's peace. And if you want to know what's at stake here, Paul Donnelly will take you through it. Every bullet and bomb. Rory Challens, Al Jazeera, Belfast.